great lessons in terms of innovation. How do you change your perception of the threats that are out there and start to see them as opportunities rather than threats? I'd put a stake in the ground for a second big point, mm. and that's see innovation as a hardcore skill, not as a soft, fluffy thing that you kind of think about you know, in nice, cloudy ways. Put hard metrics to your innovation plan, make sure that it's deliverable, measure it, and kill things that don't work very, very quickly. And innovation also is to innovate. It's not doing what we do necessarily better. Sure, that's important. You can innovate, you could do that better, but maybe do something completely different. I, I think mm -hmm. of examples like Tongart Hewlett, which sure. is a sugar cane producer and manufacturer sugar. It then said, hold on a second, but we can produce sugar more cheaply and get better rates for it if we do it in Malawi. Now we've got lots of land near Durban that we can sell. But now, you know, with my learned futurist on my right here, uh, Tongart Hewlett realized that you've got a volatility in the sugar market. You know, what is the future of the sugar industry? Um, now you can grow a better cane or you can look at the asset that you have and go hang on a second this is this is actually worth something for another use uh, we've had mining clients that have had their heads so far underground trying to extract the most out of a you know a low cost uh, ore body but they're sitting on golf courses and lakes and you know some lakes are not poisonous they're actually fantastic so we've set up fantastic property management property development businesses for something that was normally a gold mining business. Mm. This is a time of necessity. It is a time where innovators will reinvent the world in which we're going to live over the next 20 years. It's a time in which a certain percentage of successful companies will either thrive or emerge, or new co companies will emerge. It's also a time in which a large number of companies are going to fail because they've got their heads under the covers, as we said earlier on. They're running away from the concept, this is the time to innovate. And companies that aren't doing it are setting themselves up to fail. There would have been a wagon wheel maker. It's one of my favorite thoughts on this in 1916, as that nice Mr. Dunlop was uh, inventing vulcanized rubber and the rubber tire. We don't have wagon wheels anymore. This is a time. Are we at a stage, do you think, in the, in the development of the world, where we at that point, where we're going from wooden spokes and hard wooden wheels to, to, to new technology? Is well, it that radical? Like Henry Ford said, you know, if you ask people what they'd want, they'd say faster horses. Um, they got an automobile. Uh, we are absolutely in this time. There has to be extinction. There has to be a release. There has to be some fragmentation in the market for opportunities to emerge. It's now who's actually got the closest BDI on those opportunities and the ability to, fo uh, to actually execute on them. Uh, it's very well, you know, it's all very well to say, you know, this is great rhetoric, etc. The difference between the winner and the loser is someone who can convert the rhetoric into reality. Mm -hmm. Tangible results in the shortest possible time. Agility. There's a word to take home with you, agility. If your business is not able to respond incredibly quickly to changes, then you're in trouble. So have a look at how you make your business agile. Have a look at how you as the CEO become agile in your thinking and you know, set it against the context of the long-term sustainability of your business. It's not just about today. It's about being a profitable, sustainable business tomorrow as well.